Welcome. Uh, we're going to do some guillotines, half guard. Um, so either we get the guillotine or we get a pass, which is fantastic. So we're in half guard. Let's say he's got underhook. Okay. A lot of people think, oh, I'm going to attack guillotine. Okay. You can attack a guillotine from here, but you, you've got to be clever about how you do it. Okay. Right now, my knee is trapped. There's going to be a lot of stuff in this video. Guillotine. We'll talk about Japanese necktie. So make, make sure you stick around to the end because there's going to be a lot of, lot of stuff covered. A lot of people think they can attack guillotine, like an arming guillotine from here, and they'll start trying to you know, ah, go squeeze here. It's not working, and they think, all right, oh god, ah, ah, and then they get squashed. He'll start tripoding. He'll start putting weight down. Ah. It's very difficult for me to finish from that position. Okay. In previous videos, we talked about optimal guillotining position from the bottom. It applies from the top. Right? Jiu Jitsu is really good. If you think about things in, in three dimensions, the same positions uh, occur just when we're upside down or flipped or changed by 90 degrees or 180 degrees. So doing guillotines from the bottom is the same as doing them from the top, just 180 degrees different. And we know that the best guillotine that we can get is when his head and body are on the same side. Okay? The worst is when he jumps across and he goes to von flu choke me. Yeah, he can put all the pressure down here. I can't isolate his neck, the angle has changed. Okay, I can't find his throat here very well. Exceptions are made for high elbow guillotines, for power guillotines, okay, because I can actually block his shoulder and still pressure his throat. But regular guillotines we're talking about here. Um, second worst is this position where I have half guard here, but his head is on this side, okay? And that's exactly where we ended up. So here, I can get a bit of pressure, but if he starts to tripod up, uh, and he puts pressure, he can take a lot of it away from his neck and put a lot through me, through his shoulder, yeah? Into the ground, through my chest, makes life hard for me, okay? So grabbing this guillotine from the, on the top may seem like a good idea, but it's positionally compromised, okay? I don't want to get too damn her about it, but it, it's, it's not a good position. Even better, yeah, we use some wedges. <laughs> talk, about, talk about wedges. <laughs> now, this all changes, though, if this knee isn't trapped, all right? So whether I do it before or after, if I can start bringing this knee out, now this, this is a game changer. He's got this underhook, I grab this, or well, now I can force my knee across and into a three-quarter mount. And I'm gonna try and like base on my head. Boom. From here, I can start using free leg to pass, open his leg, his boom, pass the guard, uh, pass the guard to mount, finish from mount. So that's a complete game changer because I can put him in good positions. Okay, I could finish a knee cut to that side and have a good uh, position, head and body on the same side. So for example, if we've got that half guard, but my knee is free, he sits up, I can lock this, you know, I can start passing through, um, but his head's gonna be on the wrong side, but then I can, I'm free and I can put it back where I want it later. So I might use that to pass, boom, and then put him right where I want him. We can switch to Anaconda if he falls over. Remember, in our choking headlock system, Anaconda works really well with guillotine when they try to turn away from guillotines. Or I can drive to mount. So if we show that from the other side, so you can see where my knee is going. So this knee is no longer trapped. I get my compromised guillotine, but now I'm able to force in this direction. Boom. Now I'm able to try and use this grip to pass. Mount. Okay. We can bail on the mount. Start putting him into anaconda, into guillotine, etc., etc., etc. We can start working from there. Okay, um, so that's the easiest guillotine to grab because I don't have to move his head. Next one we can do is power guillotine. Okay, so he's got my underhook. He's starting to try and attack me. Maybe he's starting to try and go old school, grab the foot here. You know, if, if I can defend this for a little bit whoop, and sneak through, all I need is my chest on top of his arm and a little bit of a gap here. So. Boom, gap, there's my power guillotine. He can sweep me now. Okay, we talked about power guillotines. It doesn't matter now that he's on the 
wrong side for the guillotine. Okay? Power guillotine is different. We're talking about regular guillotine. Marcelo team, the high elbow guillotine is different. Okay? If we can get those, we can put him into bad positions uh, and still finish him. Right? Bad positions for us. So same thing here. Okay? If I was to get this and go with Marcelo team, even if he came up on top, yeah, and even if you pass them to side control, this is still finishable. Okay? We can't pass around high elbow guillotines and we can't pass around uh, power guillotines. Okay? Game changers. So we can finish it, or we can use all of this to pass. Right? The other thing we can attempt is Japanese neckties. So Japanese neckties are really good. Um, I tend to think of a Japanese necktie uh, as, an, as an anaconda without the full grip. Okay? However you want to think about it, uh, it doesn't matter. But the way I think about it like an anaconda teaches me how to finish. Because I know my anaconda finishing is going to come from a squeeze, but mainly it's going to come from a fold of the neck. Right? And we're going to see that here. So we just point towards the thing. So I'm here, look. Now if I can get my belly on top of Shiro's head, I don't need to pass the half guard. Boom, I just get to here. And I keep the half guard. Then I hip in, and we're gonna get the neck crank, we're gonna get the choke, right? Same as anaconda. If I have anaconda, just come to me. All right, so I get to something like this, then I roll through, all right? What's going to finish Shiro here is me walking towards his legs and folding his head down onto my arm. Now, if he can walk away, he can stop that. There's always two ways that you can uh, straighten your body, all right? Let's demonstrate. You just lie on your side, okay? Uh, face the camera so they can see the pain face. If I bend Shiro's head, all right? Stay there. Straighten your body. Boom. He just moves his head, obviously. Yeah, he wants to straighten his neck. He just moves his head. But if his neck is bent and being held in place to straighten his body, he moves the entire rest of his body and it will catch up to his head. And that's exactly what happens with anacondas. You flip the guy over, you try and walk towards his leg, you try and fold his head up and he just runs away from you and he probably gets back to his knees. The good thing about the Japanese necktie is I'm in, I'm in half guard. I'm trapping his legs with my legs. That's what I want. Okay, I'm already there. So a lot of our advanced anaconda setups involve trapping the legs before we fall over. Okay, and it's the same with our Japanese necktie. So we just turn so they can see the legs. As I go to my Japanese necktie, I'm going to leave this behind. My knee will probably come out, but my foot won't. Yeah. Boom. And now I'm in. Now obviously from here, I could, if I wanted to, lock up full anaconda. And it looks exactly the same. So do you see how my Japanese necktie and my anaconda, I consider them the same thing, just a variation in grip. Because the finish is exactly the same. It's that folding of the head that, to me, is the most important thing. Now that's where the power of the choke is going to come from. So, we've seen guillotining. We've seen in... Uh, which side makes the difference. And of course, remember, we could always go back in half guard. He sits up. I mean, I could always try and dominate his head to the right side that I wanted. Head, body, same side. Boom, that's gonna be a powerful guillotine. If Shiro was to come up on top now, this is good for me because I can make angles and I can start finishing. It's not as perfect as it would be if he was outside my half guard to that side, but it's good enough and I will get a finish. It's just very difficult to move his head. Okay? The other things that we can do, just like using Kimura, yeah, I can use this grip to immobilize and control as I pass the guard. And it's exactly the same with my head and arm. Okay, so I have my head and arm guillotine position and I can use this as a control while I try and free my leg, I can base, free the knee, okay, knee comes in, can cut, 
can back step, we can go into our leg lock game. I've got a little submission here. So we can use it to do things outside of the guillotine, okay? Or we can take the power guillotine, or we can take the Japanese necktie. So it all ties in together. Got a lot of options, but what I'm trying to get you guys to think about is where you would end up if you were on your back. Because that's the familiar place for guillotines for a lot of people. And we know good, bad, you know, where they need to be for good and bad, right? Obviously, side control with the Ovince Saint Pru, the, the, the Von Flu, I'm trying to remember the original name of it, the Von Flu, uh, is always a danger. But the other side is golden, okay? And then we can bring in variations that doesn't matter to that. So, have a play, think about using the guillotine from on top, see how you get on if you like it, you know, leave me a comment, if you didn't like it, click the thumbs down button twice, uh, come back again. Thanks guys.